everyone. Hi there. So today in the video we thought we would go back to basics and just have a little look about the difference between eau de colognes versus eau de toilettes versus eau de parfums and even pure perfumes because we thought that sometimes that can be a bit confusing. It is because they're, they're all priced differently, mm. they often smell different yeah. and when you're picking stuff up in store you might be thinking well what is better, what yeah. should I be buying? Exactly and you know um, when we talk about the term say eau de cologne or, or eau de toilette we're often referring to the intensity or the, the strength or the concentration of the fragrance, mm. i.e. how much of the fragranced oil, the perfume oil, is in the alcohol and water formula that makes up a perfume. Mm -hmm. um, and the funny thing is, there's no actual industry regulation and rule that tells a perfumer, right, if it's an eau de toilette, it has to be this percentage of perfume oil mm. in the alcohol and water formula. Um, so actually, it's quite a, a sort of creative thing it that is. can be stretched. <laughs> Um, but on the whole, let's talk about from lightest to most intense, mm -hmm. starting with, and forget the body products for a minute, but starting with Eau de Cologne, which is the lightest, yeah. then Eau de Toilette, then Eau de Parfum, then the most intense, the, the strongest, the most powerful concentration mm -hmm. is the Pure Perfume. Um, so Eau de Cologne, let's talk about Eau de Cologne yeah. and, and where they came from. Because um, I quite like eau de colognes, mm. actually. They're, they are there definitely to give a specific mood, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, I quite like the history of it as well, because it was back, as far back as 1709, believe it or not, when a perfumer called Jean-Marie Farina, who was an Italian perfumer, moved to Cologne in Germany and um, created a fragrance that was refreshing and uplifting and had a lot of ingredients that reminded him of his home in Tuscany, in Italy. Um, and it was very, very popular, and as often these things do, it became a real trend, and other people copied and called their fragrances Eau de Colognes, mm. and now it's just a type of fragrance. Yeah. So an Eau de Cologne has got the least amount mm. of the perfumed oils in it, yeah. and a lot of water and alcohol. So that means when you spray it, it isn't gonna last as long on the skin, True. because it's not got as much of the oil. But because of the link to the Tuscany, Mediterranean, mm. eau de colognes tend to be fragrances that are quite refreshing, yeah. citrusy, Citrus. green, uplifting, and remind mm. you of the Mediterranean. So um, just to show you an example. I've got one here actually, really nice. This is very citrus. Yeah, so this is um, an eau de cologne from Annie Guttal Fragrance House, and it's the fragrance of Eau d'Adrian. Mm. Um, so this is actually inspired, as well as being an eau de cologne, by Tuscany mm. and the Tuscan landscape and the things that you would find there. So the citrus fruits and the cypress yeah. trees. Um, but what you'll notice is that it's a big <sighs> bottle. Yeah. And often colognes come in a big bottle, and mm. that's because you're going to need to reapply. Mm. So you're going to need to use quite a lot of the fragrance mm. because it's not so um, concentrated. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it makes me feel so good. This it's it doesn't last as long as a as a stronger perfume concentration but I don't care because I want to just keep reapplying this. Mm -hmm. It just makes me feel really happy. <laughs> just does. Uh, okay, so let's talk about Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum. Um, now the interesting thing about these two strengths of perfume is that in the olden days, <laughs> quite a lot of the time, you used to go into a perfumery and often the advisor would say, oh well an Eau de Parfum is a stronger version of the Eau de Toilette. Well, nowadays that's not quite true in many cases because what happens often is that an eau de toilette is launched or an eau de parfum is launched in a certain brand and then they'll come out maybe uh, six months, a year later with the other version, either the eau de toilette, mm -hmm. if an eau de parfum was launched originally. And often the perfumer puts different ingredients in them or accents different mm -hmm. ingredients so they don't smell the same. So you can't just say, that an eau de parfum is a stronger version mm. of an eau de toilette. Mm. It could um, be that you like the eau de toilette of a certain fragrance and you really don't like the eau yeah. de parfum because it's quite different, That's so you true. have to try them. Mm. 
So you've got an example behind yeah, you so of, of exactly that, where the eau de parfum came out first with certain ingredients, and then the eau de toilette appeared later, and it had different ingredients highlighted. So this is Jimmy Choo, um, the original Jimmy Choo fragrance, um, and you'll see first of all the bottle. So this is the EDT, um, and this is the EDP. Those are the kind of shortenings for eau de toilette and eau de parfum, and the fragrance is. Um, the, this one came out first, the mm. Eau de Parfum, and it's a very toffee, sweet, gourmand mm. fragrance with pear mm. and tiger orchid. But with the EDT, what they thought is they're gonna make something that's not as intense, not as gourmand, and maybe t appeals to people that want something a bit fresher. Yeah. So they took down the toffee mm. and the tiger orchid, and they heightened the smell of ginger, yeah. which is very refreshing. Um, and also tea rose, which is a much softer floral mm. to the tiger orchid mm. that you've got in the EDP. So it can be quite misleading. Yeah, it can. Um, <laughs> and so you have to be careful, but obviously because of the concentrations, the EDP will last longer on your mm. skin than the EDT. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then if you want something that lasts all day, I mean, if we're talking like an eau de cologne will last maybe an hour tops, um, a perfume, a pure perfume, that will last you eight hours, say. Mm. Um, sometimes called extract, sometimes called pure perfume, sometimes called just parfum, um, various names for it. And it's like the, the highest form, <laughs> if you like, of perfume. Mm. So the most um, percentage of ingredients, mm. i.e. perfumed oils, in the formula. Mm. Um, actually, And the most expensive. Not every brand does mm. this. It's quite rare. It's quite rare, and often they'll come, this is a Cartier one, they'll come in really beautiful sort of jewellery type boxes. This is, um, what is this? La, La Pantere. <laughs> this is La Pantere, and actually it's one of those, it's often quite small, Yeah. because it's expensive. Um, it's one of those bottles that I want in my mm -hmm. house, in my dressing mm -hmm. table, it's just really stunning. And usually with a pure parfum, not always, but usually they won't be a spray mechanism. No, they'll be like a dab mechanism yeah. because it's very highly concentrated. You literally just need a little touch, and it's going to last mm. you um, hours. Um, and it's a very traditional way That's of perfuming that. yourself because <laughs> um, this is kind it's of beautiful. hundreds of years ago how people would yeah. perfume themselves before the spray mechanism. Um, was invented, so mm. it is very precious. Yeah, gorgeous. So hopefully that's helped you a little bit understand the difference between some of these concentrations. Mm. Um, do let us know what concentration of fragrance you tend to wear. We'd really be interested in that to see if you're a pure perfume girl or a guy, because there are guys who buy pure perfume mm. nowadays as well, um, or whether you prefer something like an eau de toilette or an eau de cologne. So thank you for watching this video. If you've got any other questions related to fragrance concentrations, leave them below and we'll try and um, help you out with those. So um, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.